<laughs> when I look back at it now, I kind of can sense a kind of desperateness about it, a kind of need to uh, to justify and justify its existence. And so it seems to me a bit funny looking back on it, though at the time, in the mindset we were in, that was really, we, we thought that was very close to what we wanted to say. But anyway, I thought that was quite uh, worth showing here. And the two major points in it are these two things, really. You make the creative industries a bigger than you think, um, and they make a more, a sizable economic contribution to Australia. And that there's a kind of add-on effect to them. There's a kind of enabling effect. Again, these are key themes, really, which if they're not clearly stated in the Valuing Australian Industries, Creative Industries Report, that is kind of what they were, uh, they were in, the, those themes were in our minds when we were putting those reports together. So, what's the um, So, thank you. Very good question. Uh, so, when the Department of Industry realised they didn't know anything about the Creative Industries, and their first response was to look for an industry partner. So they put out a tender for organisations to tender, uh, to, to propose their interest in hosting the Creative Industries Innovation Centre. UTS won that tender in uh, cooperation with a whole lot of universities around Australia. But it was UTS which hosted the, the space there. So in effect, they provided the office, they provided support staff, they provided some other bits of Now, uh, I was talking a little bit about the lack of data around the creative industries, and, and Enterprise Connect had commissioned a report in 2009 uh, about the size and scope of the industries. As it's kind of important to know that before you go and start delivering a service around the country, to know how many people there are who potentially might be interested in it. We commissioned an updated report, which is the Valuing Australia's Creative Industries Report, based on a different methodology. So that methodology was pioneered by an organisation called NESTA, which is the National Endowment for Science, Technology and the Arts. It's based in the UK. Uh, they had written an intellectual report called the Giant Apple Mapping of the UK's Creative Industries, and it calculated the size and scope of these industries in a different way. Oh, as I've just said. So what they did was they talked about embedded creatives. And if you've read the report, this will be familiar to you. They said the creative industries is not just companies and organisations in those sectors. If we count people who work in creative occupations in non-creative companies, then that extends the, the scope of the creative industry. So part of our motivation in commissioning that report was to say, uh -huh, We've got this old report back in 2009, but if we apply this new methodology, which has been pioneered somewhere else, we might find that the economic impact of the creative industries is much bigger than we thought it was. Because that was the experience in the UK. Nesta's methodology argued that you could see a greater economic impact if you counted them in this way. But sadly, in the Australian experience, in our report, the difference was not that great. It wasn't that big a story to tell. So, uh, is, everyone familiar, is everyone familiar with that embedded methodology that I talked about from the report? Could people pick up on that? Um, there might be a few problems with it. Does anyone, I mean, does anyone have 